And this is the Red Tiger Hardwire Kit. And on this video, I'm gonna show you its features and how it works in preparation for installation. As always, I have placed a link in the description down below to this kit in case you need to get one. But with that being said, let's take a look at the Red Tiger Hardwire Kit. And here's the Red Tiger T27 Hardwire Kit. Let's get familiar with it. On this end, we have a right angle USB-C type connector, and this connector is gonna go to the dash cam. Then if we follow the hardwire kit all the way to the opposite end, we have this end, and this end is gonna go to the fuse box of our vehicle. But now let's look at this guy a little bit closer. And let's begin with power output. The T27 hardwire kit is able to output three amps. Now most mirror dash cams need 2.5 amps or more in order for them to function, so we have three amps here, more than enough power. And the T27 hardwire kit supports low voltage protection. Because this kit is constantly pulling power from our battery, we want this kit to eventually turn off, otherwise the battery will drain. And you can see on here when that cutoff happens. When the battery reaches 11.8 volts, this kit will turn off to protect it. And on some hardwire kits, the low voltage protection is adjustable via a switch or a button that we can push. On the T27 hardwire kit, we cannot adjust that cutoff. It's always gonna happen at 11.8. Now on the Wolfbox X Power Kit, we have a button which we can select from three different levels. And also on the Ruby Ultimate Hardwire Kit, we have a little switch where we can change at what point that cutoff happens. Now this is not a big deal for me because I never actually changed the default. In fact, 11.8 is a very conservative number where the battery is not gonna get significantly low and it should be safe for most vehicles. But now let's talk about the end that goes to the fuse box where we have three wires. And we'll begin with the very first one. This wire right here is gonna go to ground, which is normally a metallic portion of the body of the vehicle. Normally I find a bolt where I can see some metal, I pull the bolt out a little bit, insert this underneath the bolt and re-tighten the bolt, giving me good ground. And the next wire is ACC. And ACC stands for accessory, which means that this should have power when the key is in the accessory position or when the car is fully running. When the car is off, there should not be any power going to the ACC wire. And finally, we have the B plus wire. This wire has to be connected to a source of power that has power all the time. When the car is on, when the car is off, there should always be power going to the B plus wire. So to recap, this has to go to ground, which is normally a metallic portion of the car. ACC has to go to a power source that only has power when the car is in the accessory position or when the car is running and B plus has to go to a power source that has power all the time. But how are these things actually connected to the car? Well, this one is fairly easy because like I said earlier, I usually find a bolt, put this underneath the bolt, lock down the bolt and I have ground. Now the other two are gonna go to the fuse box of the vehicle. I have to find an empty spot in the fuse box of the vehicle that provides ACC power. And once I find that source and it's empty, I can insert this in there and I have ACC power. Then I'll repeat the same process for the B plus. I'll find an empty spot that provides B plus power and then insert that into that empty spot. But it's not always that easy. Depending on the vehicle that I'm working on, these things may either connect directly to the fuse box or they may not fit at all. And the reason for that is that the different car manufacturers use different fuse sizes. And you can see on here the most common fuse sizes. The very first one that are starting at the very top is the full size or the standard size. And then the next one is gonna be the mini size. After that, we have the micro size and then we have the low profile size. So this, as you can see, is a mini size. If my car uses mini few sizes, then this is gonna work correctly. But if my car uses the standard size, these things are not gonna fit into this position. Notice how much different the size is. So at this point, how do I connect my hardwire kit if the fuse size of my vehicle does not match the hardwire kit? And this is where fuse taps come in. These little adapters allows us to change the end to match the fuse size of our vehicle. As you can see, this end is a standard fuse size that matches the standard fuse size that I need. Now on some hard wire kits, this fuse can be pulled off and then this can be attached, allowing me to change the size of the fuse. Unfortunately, on the T27, this is permanently attached. So that means I'm gonna have to cut this off 
and then connect that wire to here to be able to change the fuse size if I need to. And I have already made a video showing that process of how to attach this to this. If you guys wanna see that video, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And the fuse steps are available in different fuse sizes. I have first the standard, then I have the mini, then I have the micro, and then I have the low profile so I can change the fuse size to the fuse size that matches my vehicle. In case you guys need a fuse step kit, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. But here's the second potential scenario. My vehicle may use mini, so I might not have to change this, but when I go to plug this into my fuse box, there is no empty space. So that means I'm gonna have to find a fuse, in this case that provides ACC power, and pull that fuse up, and then I'm gonna be able to install this one. But that creates a problem because I have to reinstall the original fuse that I pulled from the vehicle and I cannot do that with the included fuses of the T27 hardwire kit. So how do I get two fuses to fit into one single fuse slot? And again, this is where a fuse step is gonna come in handy because not only do they allow us to change the fuse size, they also allow us to have two fuses into one fuse slot. Let's look at this in a little bit closer. And on this close up, you can see how a fuse tab has two spaces for fuses, one space in the top and one space in the bottom. The space in the bottom is for the original fuse that was pulled from the vehicle. The space on the top is for the fuse for the dash cam. So this is what it's gonna look like. The top fuse is for the dash cam and this fuse that I pulled off, now has a space to go, now I can insert it in here, then I can take the fuse tab and insert that into the fuse box. I have effectively installed two fuses into one fuse spot. So as you can see, fuse steps are gonna be needed if I need to change the fuse size on this end or if I need to make space to fit two fuses into one fuse spot. And the last thing that they included in the hardwire kit is this instruction manual, which is quite tiny, but it is legible and has some nice illustrations showing how the hardwire kit works and what each connection should go to. In fact, some of the illustrations are in color, but you're probably gonna have to get a magnifying glass to be able to read them correctly. It shows you how it is connected to the vehicle and what can happen if any of the wires are connected incorrectly. So overall, we don't get much with the T27 hardwire kit besides the bare bone essentials, which is really just the kit and an instruction manual. Now, I like that the instruction manual is very detailed. I wish it was a little larger in size. And on this side, I'm okay with not being able to adjust the low voltage cutoff because they picked 11.8. That's a nice conservative number. On some kits that are adjustable, that let you get really low. If you go very low, sometimes you can actually strand yourself because you told the kid, keep going, man and keep using battery power. So 11.8 I think is gonna be a nice conservative number for anybody who don't wanna change or adjust that setting. But I do wish that they had included a set of fuse steps and I do wish that they had made both of these ends replaceable. On some hard wire kits, we do get a set of fuse steps and as you can see, the fuse step has a quick disconnect so I can literally unplug it and then put in a new one. Now I have to do that process myself and I think most people are willing to pay a little bit more money to have that already built in from the start. But now that you're familiar with the Red Tiger hardwire kit, make sure you check out my other video on the actual hardwire installation process. I placed a link to it in the description down below to it, including a link to this hardwire kit in case you need to get one and a link to the few steps if needed. And if this video helped you in any way, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And Stay tuned as I have more dash cams and cool car gadgets coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.